Welcome everybody. So today in this video, we're going to be doing a really exciting automation. We're going to be doing an onboarding automation. So this onboarding automation is going to watch my Airtable CRM for a webhook, uh, which I'll show you how to do. And I'll give you a video to watch on how to trigger that webhook, but it's going to watch for a webhook in make.com. It's then going to go to toggle and create a project for that client in toggle. And it's going to go to Slack and create a private channel for that client in Slack. And then the last thing is it's going to send a message in that channel in Slack, like a templated onboarding message. So that's what we're going to, and then it's going to update Airtable at the end. Uh, if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I help businesses build out these kind of automations and these, this example of the CRM system that I'll be showing you, which is mine. I help businesses build out these kind of systems all the time. So if you're interested in that, you can check out the link in the description. If you want some help, you don't want to go through this alone anymore and get some professional help building out these systems. But without further ado, we're going to jump right into, uh, first, this is our webhook. Uh, secondly, we're also going to pull over Miro where we mapped all this out because this is a whole YouTube series on building out these systems. So this is the automation we're going to be doing. Uh, with the caveat that I will not be doing eSignatures.io in this one because I don't have a contract ready for this automation. So this is everything that it's going to do. It's going to start off with the webhook, except in, instead of Zapier, it's going to do make. Uh, it's then going to update the Airtable record because I don't pass through hardly any information at all into the webhook. And then instead of, we're not, we're just going to skip this step. We're going to create a client and toggle. Uh, this is actually untrue. It's just going to go straight to creating a project in Toggle. And then it's going to create a Slack channel, and then it's going to send a message. The last thing that it's going to do is it's going to update the record in Airtable. So it's a little bit messy, but this is everything that our automation is going to do. So this is what we're going to start building out. So everything starts off in Airtable. How this all works is in a previous video, we had set up this thing where it says, once you move somebody to a certain status, in our case, closed one, that triggers an automation. So this is our trigger. This is the start of the onboarding. When you say deal stage is closed one and onboarding is not complete yet, then it goes and runs a script, which I give this script in the other video. This triggers a webhook, which just passes through the record ID, and then it updates onboarding to be complete. So now we're going to build out that automation and make. So the first thing that we have here is just a record ID. So this is the successful test of that automation, which again, I'll give at the end, I'll show you how to do the webhook side of it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a module in Airtable. And this module in Airtable, it's going to update that record. The reason why I like doing it this way is because to update the record, we, or I use the update record to pull all the information from the Airtable record because I, all I pass through is the record ID and I'm a little bit lazy. Okay, so now we're in Optimize. We want to go to the table, Companies. The record ID is going to be from right here. And we're going to try to see if I don't have to update anything. Actually, at this point, um, we can update the toggle ID because that will be something that gets updated in this. So that should be fine. So you can put any value you want in that. Uh, we're going to test this by using the record ID from our test here. So I'm going to run this module, include the record ID from the test, and see if that updated our Airtable base. Sweet. So that updated it, and it should have also pulled in the name from right here. So going back to Airtable, I should have already pulled in a really unique name for that company, or else I wouldn't have clicked closed one, uh, because I know that that triggers this. And in this case, it says school. So now I want to just continue through the rest of our Miro step by step. So now we've updated the Airtable record. Now I want to go create a project in Toggle. So I want to add something that says 
toggle, toggle track, what I want to do is create a new project. So the name of this project is going to be from Airtable. It's going to be the name of the client, which in this case is school. It's going to be from optimize. It's going to be from optimize. The client ID is going to be for me, it's going to be service delivery. Active, all the rest of this, uh, I'm going to say, I think it's yes. Is it private? I'm going to say no, not private. Uh, this shouldn't be used as a template necessarily. And I think all that will be good. So now let's test this out. The ID will be, so this says ID for updating the Airtable record. We'll try that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into toggle and confirm that I have that project. All right, so I did that incorrectly. Uh, I created a project with the name of the record ID that I pasted in there. So we're gonna retry this but instead say school is gonna be the ID. And now I'm gonna go confirm that this works again. Sweet. So I just confirmed in toggle, I have a new project that says school, it's for service delivery. And this is what that project looks like. So school, service delivery, it looks all right. Okay, so now I've done that. Now I need to go create a Slack channel so I'm going to add another module in Slack and I'm going to say in the channel section, not list channels. Let's see. Maybe I'll just create, create a channel. I'm going to add my account. Okay. So I've added my Slack account, which you can just go through by clicking add here. And now the name I'm going to pull from school, but on all mine to make sure they sort right, I include one dash the name and then I'm going to say, yes, this is private. So now I'm going to run this and I'm going to say, I'm going to say school, see if this works. So it says there's an error, invalid name specials. Okay, so let's try running this again. Let's say school lowercase. Okay, so that was the problem. Slack cannot accept anything that is uppercase. So what I need to do now is make sure in Airtable I go back to Airtable and I add a Slack channel name. So this is my name. This is going to be what the Slack channel name is. Slack channel name. This is going to be a formula that makes everything lower in my name formula. So now I'm going to use the Slack channel name, go back here. Click run this module. How I will run that is by saying, oh, I think we had the record ID here. Nope. No, we'll have to use the Airtable record by a little bit of a manual work. So here, um, I can't really see it gonna to be too many characters, but I should have just copied the record ID, which you can get from this URL right here. Okay, so here's the record ID. Now I'm gonna jump back into make. We're gonna use this record ID to say, update the record. So now when I go to create the Slack channel, instead of saying ID, I should be able to pull the Slack channel name instead. Sweet. So now I've created the Slack channel. I want to go into Slack and I want to create
create a message. Unpin, pin, delete a message, update a message, create a message. Yep, create a message. One last thing now that we're here that I see is I also want to pin the message that I create. So just as a mental note, we're gonna go back and do that. So we're gonna enter this manually, enter a Slack channel ID or name. The channel ID is gonna be from the previous step right here. The text that it's gonna say, I'm gonna write later, but I'm just gonna say test for now. And then I'm going to have it pin that message. So it's gonna pull from the Slack. Okay, I need to go extend the permissions one second. Okay, so I had to extend the permissions and then I said private channel. I included the channel ID, the message ID. Usually I believe it starts with like TS. I guess it would be right here. So let's include that. One thing to note here is also you should be able to show advanced settings and we should be able to make it like look cool. So I'll have it say like Ben, Ben Green. I want it to not do certain things. I want it to use like certain usernames or icon URLs. Um, this will make it look, look pretty if you wanted to. And then this should pin the message. So we're gonna test this out. Uh, I'm going to turn this on and we're going to test this out completely. Now, before I completely test this out, I want to add a Airtable action like we had talked about previously. So, so far we've created a project, created a Slack channel, sent the message, and then we want to update the Airtable record. I'm not confident about that pin message yet. So I'm just going to add update record right here and auto align this. It's going to update our optimized CRM. It's going to update the table companies. The record ID is going to be from the trigger right here. Now there's a few things I need to go update. So I need to update the toggle ID to be right here, the project ID. And would I need anything from Slack? So I should have the Slack name and I should, yeah, I think that should be pretty much it. I'd really just need to bring the, tog the toggle project ID back in. And if I had anything about e-signatures, I would also include something about the e-signature, like maybe the PDF or something, but this should be good enough to save it. And it looks like I must have forgot to do something. Okay, so we'll just save that and we're, we're gonna test this out. Let's go into our Airtable and we're going to say, update this to be closed one. Oh, and that, okay. Let's see if it works or not. And there may already be something with that name, which could be a, Interesting. So let's now go in and see the history. One second. Okay, so I went out just a little bit and we have our integration webhooks right here. There's some error. I didn't look to see what the error was yet, but we're going to go through this. Let's figure out what happened. Okay, so it says channel not found. Now this channel should be found. Let me go check my uh, Slack to make sure that this channel is in fact there. Okay, so I confirmed it is there. My thought is maybe it happened too fast, so maybe it needs to wait a second for me to get in the channel. I didn't have to join it, but let's see if we can process this. Options. I don't know 
there's an option to like run the queue, turn it on, process old data. So if we, okay, so it still says, oh, it went back and created a new project. Okay, so let's run this, include the channel ID here now. Okay, so it says channel not found. So we did say enter manually. The channel ID should be from step four, which it has a channel ID. So it says channel not found. Let's try running that again. Channel still not found. Okay, so the problem was it was on the wrong Slack channel or on the wrong Slack workspace, if you will. So let's click OK, let's save all that, and let's see what happens. So, so far I've successfully but unsuccessfully tried it with OIS as well as this one. Let's try it with optimize IS test. That's multiple words. We'll see what happens. So let's close one. did not update the toggle ID to be OB. Oh, that's because it's not on, duh. So let's move this back to pre-consultation. Okay, so this allegedly was on. Let's go back to Airtable, update this to be closed one and see what happens. Nothing yet. Okay. If it gets back in here and updates it with a toggle ID, that should mean almost guaranteed success. Still nothing, however. Okay. So now what I think it is, is Slack also can't use spaces. So let's go back here and we're going to say substitute any spaces with dashes. And we will also substitute most 20 characters. So we're just going to add a few like replace at signs with dashes, replace backslashes with dashes. Okay. So now we shouldn't have to change anything there. Let's just say, let's go here, refresh this page, make sure it's still on. Okay. It's not on. We'll delete all the old data, turn it on. And now let's say closed one. Sweet. So now let me check Slack. I can see sales biz dev. This appears to work. It pinned the message to be a test message and it created the private channel. So I think 18 minutes later, that is a, a great success. And now we can turn this on and I don't know of anything else we need to do other than customize the message and change the webhook in case anybody got it on the videos. So let me know if you like this in the, like this tutorial in the comments, but if you want to learn how to do that webhook automation, you can go check out the video right here in the end screen, you can learn an in-depth tutorial on how we built this automation right here.
I will go into step-by-step -step how to do that and includes the script in that video. So if you didn't catch that in this video and you want to really learn how to trigger any webhook from Airtable, not just particularly this example, but any webhook should follow that same format and you can create the same automation. So go click that video right there in the end screen and I'll see you in, see you in that one.